I'm Jake Bruton, and today on The Build Show, we want to talk about a different uh, looking sheathing when what you're used to. This would normally be green on one of our projects. Why is it white? Let's do it now. Okay, so the product you are seeing behind me, the white sheathing, is actually this stuff that I don't think you can probably see very well. This is ExoCore. This is a new product from Huber, and they happened to release it like at the exact moment that we were looking into fire rated assemblies, which is kind of the, the whole point behind this video. So let's talk about why this instead of our normal zip product. Number one is location, number two is proximity. So the neighborhood that we're in, you might even be able to hear if there's a lot of road noise. Uh, we're in an older neighborhood here in Columbia. We're in a neighborhood that's a bunch of small bungalows. I'm standing on a shared driveway. You get the sense of where we are that's busy little neighborhood. They only have so much room on their lot to put an addition. And right here behind the camera is a uh, shared garage which means our finish dimension or finish, uh, finish span between our overhang on this addition and the existing detached shared garage is only say 30 inches or so. Well, the city fire code requires 10 feet between buildings or the building that we're putting on to meet the ASTM E119 fire rating. So let's talk fire rating real quick so that we understand why Exacore. So the E119 test, I think it's E119-15. The number's not really important. In fact, I'll tell you right now, I've read it. It's 35 pages and I understand it less now than before I downloaded it. So I don't recommend digging into that because there's a lot of uh, testing stuff that really doesn't matter for what you and I need as builders. What we need is uh, an assemblies test, which E119 is, uh, rather than a material test because we're actually needing the whole thing to not burn uh, under these conditions instead of just the sheathing not burning or just a stud not burning or something like that. So you're looking for an assemblies test. Our municipality goes off of E119, which is actually a really standard one. Basically what it says is this assembly built in this way can withstand fire rating uh, or a fire rating for one to two hours. So there's an E119 one hour and a two hour rating. Exacore actually meets both by switching some things out. We'll talk about that. Uh, but the whole goal is just this thing can't catch fire if this thing is burning, if the garage is burning. So you'll note we have concrete foundation. This is a conditioned crawl space. We have Exacore on the walls. We actually have Exacore on the soffit and on the fascia, and then it goes to roof sheathing, and the city wasn't worried about the roof sheathing or any flame rating up there just because it's the, the top side and unlikely to be the part that catches on fire from a push, apparently. That's the way they track it. So now we have soffit and fascia that are in the same product as our sheathing product. And we actually did it around the whole thing. Even though the code only requires about 10 feet uh, from point of contact here to our structure, we did the whole thing. Number one, this is a tiny addition. This is a 10 by 20 addition, 200 square feet. The clients are cramming. We're cramming in there a master bath and a like entry slash mud slash laundry room. So this is a small house, small addition. It doesn't make sense for us to try to explain to the framers and to all the crews involved that once you get this far away, we're gonna to swap to this other product and our, our methods are gonna change and then it's gonna be different. And that's the same reason for the soffit all the way around as well. It's not worth it trying to go, okay, well the soffit on this side needs to be a hat cut a half an inch up so that we can put this material on it. But on the other side, it's actually gonna be full depth and then we'll just put metal on it like, we, it just doesn't make sense on something this size to have multiple different practices, multiple different materials. It's easier to just say, this is what we're doing. This is how it needs to be done. Do the whole thing. It worked great. The, the, the crew that we use here for framing, their, their lead used to work for me. He was my second employee. We love these guys. We use them all the time. They were able to show up and go, okay, the soffits aren't exactly the same from side to side. The house is old. Everything looks great. So, our flame spread requirement are 10 feet. We're using all the same thing. Uh, and the variance from the city allows us to go to this distance. So the clients went to the city, they went to a board of adjustment, they took their attorney, 
they put forth the plan, the city heard them out, and they went, yeah, we're, we'll let you do it as long as you meet this rating. So we did have to get special permission for this as well. So now that we are talking about the actual product, not just the fact that it in an assembly, this is a magnesium oxide board. MGO is what most people call it. It is, and this is, I'm gonna say my understanding quite a few times. It's my understanding that the product is actually poured into a form with multiple layers. I think it's four layers uh, on the half inch, more on the five, uh, five eighths. Multiple layers of uh, fiberglass mesh and then magnesium oxide slurry mix is poured into a form and then it's released. It is smooth side out and the fiberglassy type side to the inside, uh, which is something you have to think about because you have to get guys that are actually going to read the panel and see that it says smooth side to the exterior. Uh, it is rocks, in other words. So it's kind of like concrete in that sense that it's not going to burn. So I believe that it also uh, uh, passes the ASTM, I think it's E85, which is the materials test on its own, but we needed an assembly test here. So <coughs> here's how the assembly tests work. The, the Huber in this instance, uh, or the manufacturer pays for an assembly to be built and shoved into this fire chamber where you basically have a five-sided box that then you your fifth or sixth side of that cube is your material, your assembly. They light the inside of the box on fire, they let it go for a while, they pull it apart, they cool it off, and then they check for damage. It's that simple. They light it on fire and see whether or not it has problems. This stuff, if you look at Huber's website, they have a product sheet and it will show you that 5 8 gypsum on the inside, 2 by 4 studs, 24 on center with fiberglass bat insulation will get you a uh, half inch exacore on the outside. It is starting to sprinkle so I'm going to talk quick. Uh, what that means is, well let me check my notes here because I want to make sure I say this correct. That's how, how confusing it can get. They test with a 2 by 4 because the 2x4's job in the assembly is strength. So then you can do a 2x6 because if it will pass with the 2x4, it will be stronger and have less to, you know, have more time to burn if it's a 2x6. So their 2x4 wall, 24 inches on center, means I can do 2x6, 24 on center, 2x6, 19, whatever that is, three and black diamond, 3 and 5 16 or 16 on center because it's more structure. So the two by four is rated off of its long-term structure in this case. Uh, the 24 inches on center also gets me the 19 and the 16 inches on center because that's adding more structure. Now, fiberglass. Fiberglass actually qualifies all of the other fluffy insulations that have fire ratings better than fiberglass. So cellulose or mineral wool. So when we got the standard on this, I went, man, it's two by four, 24 inches on center with fiberglass bat, that's not what we want to do. We want to do a two by six with mineral wool bat because we're using rock wool on this project. Well, we qualify and it works just fine. Now, it does require five eighths gypsum on the inside, which means you can't do half inch gypsum because it burns more readily. So that's the only thing in the assembly that you can't really swap out. Uh, I think the two hour assembly is two layers of yeah, the, the two hour, and this is a one hour assembly, the two hour assembly is two layers of 5 eighths rock on the inside and 5 eighths of Exacore on the outside. So there's a lot going into that and you have to know how to interpret the test results and what the manufacturer publishes. I'm picking it up. What the manufacturer publishes to be able to understand what you're allowed to do in this instance. So. I, this is our first chance to work with Exacore. I don't have any recommendation or anything on it yet. I, it's been okay to work with. It's cut and worked just fine. Our, con our subcontractors enjoyed working with it and didn't have any complaints except for the weight, which it's rocks, it's magnesium oxide. Uh, the other thing to note here is all these little pink dots that you can see in the background. That is a product from Prosico that we're gonna talk about in the next video because the Exacore is actually porous and it does not count as a WRB. So we have to have something else here. So we'll talk about that in next week's video. Now that I'm standing in the rain, but I'm almost done, I'm gonna say thanks for watching the Build Show Network this week. 
it's pretty interesting to get to learn about new products and how some of the ASTM test methods work. It's really interesting to hear how they interpret those sorts of things. Uh, make sure you sign up for the newsletter. There are two uh, emails a week that let you know all the new content from Build Show Network. There's a great group of contributors. I'm really happy with all the people that they've added, all of us original crew, all the people that I've heard rumor that they're bringing on. Don't ask because I can't tell you. But there is some good stuff coming, so make sure you sign up for that newsletter so you don't miss any of it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and thanks for watching.